the supernatural, or the Feinstofsinlisch, or fluidal powers. Billy Myers' answer to a reader's question, published in the Figu Special Bulletin No. 38, August 2007. Translator's note Please refer to the end of this document to read an explanation about the unconventional and strange English word choices and the German words used in this translation. Please refer to endnotes for definitions of German words. Readers question what essentially is to be understood by the term supernatural. What exactly is that and how exactly does it function? One always hears so much about this supernatural especially that one can thereby see spirits and hear the dead talk, or one can be called by the dying, and so forth. What is one to make of that? Nothing of that kind has ever happened to me yet, but acquaintances have told me that it has already been the case with them. Can you tell me something more exact about that? R. Stressler, Switzerland. Answer The answer to this question turns out to be quite extensive since the whole matter cannot simply be made clear with a few words. So I will satisfy your interest with part of a lesson from the spiritual teaching in which the following is explained the supernatural, or, the Feinstofsinlisch, or, fluidal powers. The term, supernatural, is an incorrect word which is utilized to describe something perceptible, which, for the human being, lies beyond that which is normal, material that is to say beyond that which pertains to the material senses, and thereby beyond the capabilities of material perception, therefore, rather, in the realm of the Feinstofflich. To designate that which is Feinstofflich the fluidal as supernatural, is fundamentally wrong because, Truly, there is nothing which lies beyond the perception of the human senses, rather only something which belongs beyond material sensitivity, in the realm of the Feinstofsinlisch. I am talking, in particular, about the effect of Feinstofflich thought vibrations which, in their Feinstofflich kite form, are designated as fluidal energies and fluidal forces, and which, created by the thoughts and feelings, also yield, outside of the brain, the most varied effects which can also be perceived by other human beings. These fluidal energies and their powers are not only the energies relating to telepathy, levitation and teleportation, rather also those of clairvoyance and remote viewing, whereby, for every single factor, manifestations occur which are individually different for each human being. With the reading of thoughts and with actual telepathy and all other neurophysiological factors, alpha waves play a big role, as they do with meditation, because these flow in the thought current, synchronously through both hemispheres of the brain, whereby they are also active with the processing of pictures and pictorial imaginings, as is also the case under hypnosis and in trance when the brain switches to the so-called alpha mode. Thoughts and feelings not only pass through the brain, rather they also have an effect beyond it and can be transmitted in the form of telepathy across three light seconds around 900,30 kilometers and be received and understood by another suitable brain. And because feelings also arise from thoughts, for this reason human beings can also feel it when they suddenly lose or have lost someone who they love, in the same way that they also suddenly know that they are needed by a human who is far away or one who lives nearby. Also, a look which bores into the back, a glass breaking inexplicably, or an object falling without reason pertain to that. As a rule, the reason for that is a particular human being's strong thought currents and the resulting Feinstofflich electromagnetic light speed vibrations or fluidal energies. The human being momentarily directs his strong thoughts at a certain person or persons who then perceives these vibrations and recognizes what is transmitted thereby. So, fluidal energies are set free by a human being by means of strong thought currents which are perceived by certain connected human beings and are grasped as an inkling or are correctly interpreted. And every human being is capable of that, and indeed through the correct function of the pineal gland the gland, epipysis cerebri pineal body, which is situated on the upper section of the diencephalon midbrain or between brain which in the center of the brain, perceives visual stimuli, and so forth, whereby, 
However, the precondition must always be that the human being has not allowed the capacity of this factor to atrophy. The fact is that the pineal gland is able to detect Feinstoffelish electromagnetic fields in a completely different frequency range, that is to say, to like a sensor track and recognize them, and thereby receive information. That functions equally in regard to a look which bores into the back or into the nape of the neck when, as a result of the thought vibrations of the person who is the observer, the fact of the look directed at the back or at the nape of the neck is recognized by the pineal gland and this information reaches the consciousness. The fluidal vibrations of the world of thoughts have nothing to do with the supernatural because there is no supernatural. The fluidal vibrations of the thoughts are based on a factor which is called, Feinstoffsinlich, not, however, supernatural, because the supernatural does not exist, and, indeed, because that which is Feinstoffsinlich can be perceived with the seventh sense, or, with the spiritual fine sensitive feeling, consequently it therefore lies far above that which can be perceived by means of the material senses. Unfortunately, the human being assumes they are only five senses hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, smelling although seven exist, whereby the two further ones are spiritual fine sensitive feeling and feeling, whereby the latter is associated with the instinct and is fundamentally bound with the world of thoughts. The fluidal vibrations of the world of thoughts are coupled with the fluidal vibrations of the world of feelings and, in this form, the thoughts and feelings constantly go on journeys, and, indeed, as a factor of Feinstoffsinlich kite. However, in the first years of the third millennium, the current terrestrial technology is not yet in a position to prove these Feinstoff vibrations or, these fluidal vibrations with equipment and thereby using material means, yet it is only a question of technical development and of time before they will, one day, be successfully proven. Then it will also be recognized that Feinstoffsinlich kite is based on the form which is Feinstoff vibrations or on fluidal vibrations, just as it will also be recognized that these fluidal energies and their powers are the fundamental factor of telepathy, levitation and clairvoyance, as well as of teleportation, and so forth. And the fact is that Feinstoffsinlich erroneously called, supernatural by human beings, simply out of ignorance is actually a product of the human brain, or more precisely put, of its thoughts and the feelings resulting from them. It is thereby to do with the quite normal, however not, supernatural, energy and power, whereby the whole thing is also not unearthly and not unreal, rather it is absolutely real and not eerie. And when thoughts and the feelings resulting from them go, on journeys, as Feinstoff energy which can also be perceived, in some form or other, by other human beings, by means of spiritual fine sensitive feeling then it is thereby to do with the form of telepathy. Thereby, however, it must be clear that it is solely the Feinstoff energy of the world of thoughts and world of feelings which goes, on journeys, however, not the consciousness, and, indeed, the journey takes place beyond the body in the form of a consciousness feeler or in the form of a consciousness sensor which is the case because the thoughts and feelings build up and send out the corresponding fluidal vibrations whereby the consciousness delivers the energy to it however does not itself leave the body so it is always the thoughts and their feelings which is a form of telepathy radiate from the brain and go on journeys so therefore Sensitive human beings can feel, that is to say, perceive with the seventh sense if they are observed by others, just as they can, however, also perceive if a human being is in need or dies, if that human being sends out his thoughts and feelings to the sensitive person who then perceives the call, and so forth in a Feinstoffsinlich way or by means of spiritual fine sensitive feeling. So it very often comes about that if a human being gets into desperate straits, or stands at the threshold of death, his thoughts and feelings then go off, on journeys, somewhere to a human being who has meant a lot to him. Thoughts and feelings break through all boundaries of space and time and penetrate into the brains of all those who are, spoken to, and perceive the, call, in a spiritual fine sensitive way.
the whole thing is thereby a form of telepathy, or, a form of reading of thoughts, at great distances, which reach up to 900,30s kilometers in the primary state but which can be very greatly overtaken by the so-called secondary, or, higher, telepathy, as well as by spiritual telepathy, and it has a practically infinite range. Feinstoff's English kite conceals still other energies within it, aside from telepathy, and so forth, because that which is emitted through the thoughts and feelings pertaining to the consciousness as energy, also pertains to Feinstoff's English kite, whereby one then speaks of a journey of the consciousness. However, the consciousness is not sent out thereby. Rather the consciousness energy's capability of clairvoyance, in connection with the thoughts and feelings. In this state of clairvoyance the human being is able through his energies and powers which are generated from the energy of the consciousness to steer his thoughts and feelings in such a way that he is able to look into the future or the past, or that he is seemingly suspended above the ground and, moving forward, sees and recognizes everything which takes place and occurs below him. Such is known by human beings, for example, who have lain in bed and suddenly, seemingly rose up, floating over it, and saw themselves lying below in the bed or on an operating table. Likewise, however, it can be that in such states pertaining to the consciousness of floating, other human beings and their fate are seen or events are observed which play out down on the ground, and so forth. In this way, Sequences of events which are experienced in such moments can be recounted, exactly, jot for jot. Fundamentally, the pineal gland is the critical factor which through the thoughts and feelings constitutes the realm and headquarters of the Feinstoffs in Lisch. The human beings early, and also more recent, forefathers had a more intensive grasp on this realm, or, center, and they were even able, to a certain extent, to still consciously steer the Feinstoff's English, or, the fluidal vibrations of thoughts and feelings, and utilize these energies of the consciousness along with their powers. Through the constant change of the human being in regard to his body and organism, as well as the purely material orientation of his thoughts and feelings, the pineal gland and its Feinstoff's English faculty has atrophied, consequently, in the current time, only human beings who are more or less sensitively predisposed are in a position to utilize the Feinstoff's English effectiveness of the pineal gland. Originally this organ had a diameter of little more than 3 cm in contrast to today where, as a result of shrinkage, the average has only a size of 3 mm. The reason for that lies in the fact that the human being has subjugated his inner world more and more to rational intellect and has neglected that which is sensitive of the pineal glands Feinstoff's English component, whereby the entirety is atrophied. The pineal gland is the organ of perception which pertains to the spiritual of insensitive feeling, or, pertains to the human being's seventh sense, which, however, can no longer be used by many because a barrier is unconsciously constructed against it, whereby the so-called third eye, as the pineal gland is also called, is repressed and choked in its function. For this reason not all human beings, rather only a few, can utilize its function and effectiveness. And the human being himself is to blame for this blockade because, were he to make the effort, then, in spite of his pineal gland's degeneration, he would be able to bring about this organ's functioning again to a certain extent. For that, naturally, the path is long and laborious because one must learn, through ongoing meditative practice, to allow enough energy to flow through the pineal glands area of the brain and through the pineal gland itself because only thereby is it then possible that the Feinstofflish electromagnetic fields which surround the human being will be consciously perceived. Instead of doing that, however, the human being blocks this fluidal energy and deflects it before it can even come into contact with him. But that constitutes a considerable deficiency regarding the perception of reality, because not only the coarse material belongs to it along with its energies, powers and vibrations, but also the Feinstoffelish, that which is fluidal in energies, powers and vibrations which emerge from the realms of the thoughts and feelings and the psyche, as fluidal, electromagnetic fields, as occurs with all forms of life, 
and indeed even with any. We 